from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. <laughs> I... I'm your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You and I. <laughs> so exciting to be sitting here in this chair doing this goddamn job. This is the most fun in the world. Now that I've got a five-year deal, I can say, this is the most goddamn fun in the world. It's the best. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. There <laughs> was somebody trying to tell you otherwise. Wait a minute. God <laughs> damn it. Anyway, thanks very much for being there. We appreciate it. And uh, uh, yes, indeed, we do have a lot of fun here. We do have a good time. Uh, did you see the story about Heath Ledger today? That's funny. How many points for that, Dean? A lot. He was, like he was, yes, like 72 points or something? 72. Uh, 72 points on the Deadpool. 72 points. <laughs> Did anybody have him? Brad Renfro. Nobody remembers who Brad Renfro ever was. Stop it. Brad Renfro. Uh, now he was Brad Renfro, not on anybody's Deadpool. But for God's sake, he wasn't even in Variety this year. Uh, just amazing. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Really sad to see uh, Suzanne Plachette go. Suzanne Plachette. How many points for her? Probably like two. Two. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're saying that Heath Ledger was an overdose of over-the-counter sleeping pills. That's what they're saying. I mean, really, should we be... I, here, here's my question for you, and I, I want to get into this this hour with you. You know, we joke about this if we talk about the Deadpool and stuff, but come on. If this guy took an overdose of over-the-counter sleeping pills and did himself in... Should uh, we be all solemn and, you know, feel bad for him? Should we be showing him respect? You should show him the proper respect. He died. You should be showing him respect. You should be on the radio making fun of him. He died. The housekeeper apparently tried to wake him for an appointment with his masseuse and then found the uh, bottle of pills near his bed. You know what? Let me just say this about suicide, all right? Or drug overdoses or whatever. These are the most selfish crimes there are. This guy got married, had a kid. You know, he certainly uh, had a lot of stuff going for him. I don't know what his personal problems are, and I happen to know, and I've been telling you guys this. Don't believe what you read in People magazine. Don't believe what you see in Entertainment Tonight or Extra or any of these shows. They only allow the stuff that the publicists will, will give them. They, they only put whatever spin that the celebrity wants to put. And if the celebrity has this really dark side or is doing evil things, you're not going to hear about them on The Insider Entertainment Tonight. You're just not. You're not. All you're going to hear is that these people are happy. They're, uh, here, here's an example. Matthew McConaughey. Did you see the story about Matthew McConaughey the other day? Matthew McConaughey announces that uh, he and his girlfriend, who was she a Brazilian actress or a Brazilian bikini model, whatever, the usual stuff, uh, they're having a baby. Now, what's fascinating about that is when I was in Costa Rica a couple of weeks ago, I was watching um, Showbiz Tonight on Headline News. 
whatever they call their entertainment show on, on headline news. And I saw a piece with Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson, who've done at least one, they've done at least one movie together, and I think they, they've done another one. And so in the piece, they're asking these two if they're dating. And the two of them are very coy about it. They're like, well, you know, we have a lot in common. Anything's possible. Now we find out Matthew McConaughey has a girlfriend who is several months pregnant. He's not dating Kate Hudson. He was never dating Kate Hudson. He was selling you a movie. And you moronic uh, females out there who watch these stupid shows, oh, Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson, they make a cute couple, don't you think? You can find that so great. That, 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 maybe there's some real heat. Maybe there's some real chemistry in this movie. We can see the two of them, and it's really hot because they're really, they're really doing it. No, they're not. Matthew McConaughey has his own uh, girlfriend, and he's having a baby with her. Not dating Kate Hudson. They'll say anything to sell you a goddamn movie. And you idiots watch these shows and you read People and Us Weekly and OK Magazine and what have you. And you believe this stuff like it's gospel, you morons. I didn't mean you specifically, Dean. I'm talking about the, the general public. People reading Perez Hilton, you know, taking this stuff seriously. By the way, message to Perez Hilton. Fidel Castro wanted me to say hi. He's never felt better. <laughs> Idiots believe all this crap. It's so goddamn stupid. Then you look at uh, you look at Larry King's show, and there's there's <laughs> the host of Showbiz Tonight on uh, Headline News, AJ Hammer, and he's standing outside Keith Ledger's apartment, reporting live. Where nine hours ago Heath Ledger couldn't be awakened. We're standing outside of what used to be Heath Ledger's apartment. Here we are, breathlessly reporting. The guy's dead, but we're here with any breaking developments. And his apartment's in, like, Soho in New York or something. But come on. I mean, if somebody kills themselves, do we really owe it to them to be giving them all these, all these props and be sitting on the air showing them proper respect? you got to be kidding me. If somebody kills themselves, I don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel I owe them any respect. I don't like because you know what? How selfish is that to the guy's wife? How selfish is that to the guy's kid? How selfish is that to the people who loved him? No, we don't owe him any respect at all. Okay? We don't. And I'm not going to give it to him. You think I'm wrong? Tom. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Guys look at sex the way we look at pizza. There's pizza for square pizza, round pizza. There's pizza from uh, the old-fashioned mom-and-pop store. There's pizza from Pizza Hut. The way guys look at pizza is there's no bad pizza. It's the Tom Likey Show. Tom like his show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Heath Ledger, 72 points on your dead pole if you had him, but who would have guessed? 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Vanessa, hello. Hello. Yes. Let me say that this wound is fresh, and I'm a diehard fan of culture and those that contribute to it, and... Mm-hmm. For you to be so quick to deny him any respect as a why, why does it why does a person who would take pills and kill himself deserve any respect from me? That's not what happened, and that's that's it's not what happened. Well, if you have the if you have the inside information, tell me because I'm looking at it on CNN right now. Tell me what you know that I don't, Mister Likas. You're speculating. Tell me what Nothing you know. Is what do He's you know? already he his body has just been scheduled to have an autopsy. Very good. The results will not be ready for another week or so. I'm not concerned. They found the empty pills. I'm not claiming to have any medical or clinical proof. But you are already jumping to deny him respect based upon your speculation. Well, first of all, nobody deserves respect. Let's start with that. Nobody, living or dead, deserves respect. Respect is earned. respect is earned. Absolutely. And being a movie actor is no more important a job than being a garbage man. It's the same thing. It's just another job. 
Oh no. Oh Those yes. Very wrong. Oh yes. Do you oh know yes. How celebrities and how their work affects people. More so than a garbage. Dim-witted females like yourself, yes, I know it affects you, but uh, in the real world, darling, uh, the celebrities are just people uh, working at jobs like anybody else. We work in a movie studio. We it's see them every. We see them come. Too. We it's see them come and tactic. we see them go. Is, wait, wait, sir. Is it is it your tactic to to make me lose my cool by calling me dim-witted? I, no, it's I'm just culture. telling. I'm just calling a spade a spade. Culture is global. No. Am I wrong? Is it not true that culture is... Some is, and some broke? is, and some isn't. But it doesn't matter if it is or it isn't. We're not talking about an artist here. We're talking about a working actor, which you is a job. Seen the, you haven't seen his work in Batman yet. I'll oh, you, his work in Batman. That, 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 that proves he's ours. Batman. Are you, are you stuttering? You haven't seen it yet. It's <laughs> Batman, for Christ's sake. Come on. Batman? Batman, it, it, Batman are not being a Marvel comic or whatever. <laughs> it, it portrays wonderful characters that mm. take their actor. It, now I know what kind of person I'm dealing you, with here. You have to know that... You have to see his work actors. in Batman, Gary. Okay, look, there are a few actors that embody the actual role, and that's very difficult. Come to on. Off. Darling, you're just somebody who likes to get into the sack late at night with the power tools and things okay. and, and fantasize that you're with these guys. That's what this is all about. It's nothing to do with art or no. culture. No, like I'm Batman. Not, not, oh, you have to I see him in Batman. Culture. You probably got the DVD in slow motion there and you get the power tools out at night. No, no. The only picture of any celebrity I have on my wall is a picture of Muhammad Ali practicing underneath water because I think he's a very... Regardless, I don't need to tell you about myself. At least Muhammad Ali uh, did more than just a uh, box. The guy uh, had That's principles. Why he's on my wall, Tom. The guy, uh, the guy had business. principles, and he lived up to his principles and was That's larger than life. Heath Ledger was in one movie that was recognized by the Film Academy, and other than that, he did Batman. Okay, now come on. But have you ever seen? The Joker. It, like it's a complex character. Oh yes. You, so what do you do with your day to day? You sit here and you talk to like myself. That's what you do. You're paid to just talk to the dimwitted. Absolutely. He's ledger. He he becomes and and he opens up his world. He as became other the Joker. To different types. He didn't of just play the Joker. He became the Joker. Exactly. Who does that anymore? Well, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey did it too. Jim Carrey played the Joker, didn't he? Yeah, but Jim Carrey's play the not Riddler? dead. I don't know. And Who knows? It's all Batman. It's all Batman to me. It, well, that's that's really narrow-minded. And I, you're yes. the last person I would. Darling, if you were going to call up here and name a uh, name a film that won ten Academy Awards, or something, maybe I can have this conversation. But you're talking about Batman. He was uh, he was meant. Like the director of the film has already stated that it's the performance of the year. Mark my words. I don't, the, the, the directors I always say that them. when they're trying to get you to spend eleven dollars to see the movie. Of course, they say that. That's the best. And you're the dim-witted type. You're the type of dim-witted woman I'm talking about. You you believe everything that you read and hear. I mean, Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson said Ooh, we could be dating. That could be that's, possible. No, they, no, were no, no, they, the were they were lying. They were lying. They were lying. They were lying. They were not no, dating. You you... Uh, they were not dating. And you probably watched the show like, oh wow, no, look at that. Wouldn't that be? And, wouldn't and that be nice? Like they're they're not in my world. Like I I. Well, no, not like an artist are... like Keith Ledger. No. No, 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 not his overall work. But the Joker was supposed the to be Joker in a Batman. Role. It's pivotal. That's it a, was pivotal a pivotal role. Pivotal role. In his I would. De- I'm dying to see what he was going to become next. Well, and a corpse. Ace Ventura. And Is you're it... trying to deny him respect. <laughs> He's going to be. He became a corpse. That was his next role. Who do you think you are to be so quick to judge and deny people? His next role will be into his grave. He'll be rolling right in, huh? You, you've never. You have to meet. You, you, you have no heart for cinema or art. Oh, you I really don't. I love movies. I really do. But I, you know what? The individuals in the movies, uh, the, as far as I, I am concerned, these are people doing a job. They do one job and they but move on so to the next quick job. To name Matthew McConaughey of all people. Look, I wasn't look claiming that work. he was. I wasn't. I was not comparing him as an artist to anybody. I was talking why about. Bring him up. I, I, well, darling, I'll tell you what. I'm going to put you on hold for a second because you're never going to let me finish this sentence, and I'm going to finish it, regardless of how much you continue to yammer on. Okay. 
The reason I brought up Matthew McConaughey had nothing to do with commenting on him as an artist. It had to do with the fact that these shows where directors go out and say this was the pivotal role in Heath Ledger's career, they're just on television and in magazines trying to sell you a ticket to the show. They're trying to get you to come see the movie. They, they say that about every movie. Every movie is the pivotal role for each actor in the movie. Every director is fantastic to work with. They never had any disagreements. They completely had the same creative and artistic vision. They can't wait to work with the same people again. Everybody is wonderful. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Everything is great. And then on the same show, you see Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson going, well, maybe we're dating, you know. I mean, anything can happen, you know. We gotta have that chemistry. I mean, you never know. We might be dating. Because the two of them are in a movie together and they want you to come see the movie. Later on, you find Matthew McConaughey doesn't date Kate Hudson. Matthew McConaughey has a girlfriend. She's Brazilian. He's having a baby with her. He knew that when he did the interview with Kate Hudson there. But he, does he tell you that? No, we could be dating. Yes, we could. Because they're just trying to sell you something. Now, the fact is that you are one of these dim-witted broads who believes everything you see on Entertainment Tonight, everything you see on Extra, everything you see on The Insider, everything you read in People, Us Weekly, OK, The National Enquirer, and everywhere else. You believe all that stuff. Like, oh, you should have seen him in Batman. Oh, my God. I mean, come on, please. You're, all you're doing is naming off stereotypes, none of which I identify with. Oh, I'm sure you don't. Yes. Yes, Heath Ledger in Batman was a pivotal role in his career. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it yet, but I am positive it's the best. So you haven't even seen it yet. So you haven't even Batman seen it. Franchise. Many people have tried to take on that role, and from what I've seen, the excerpts on YouTube, oh. and what I've actually been witness to. Oh my goodness! Brand new. You are Nothing trouble. before seen like that. And the least you can do is just keep his death off of your air. I don't have to keep it off the air. By the way, it's on everybody's air. Heath Ledger, dead in 28. Oh, keep it off your air. Oh, boy, you really told me off. Wait, for Christ's sake, it's on CNN right now. And I shouldn't talk about it? F you. Talk about whatever I want. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, buddy? Doing great. Listen, uh, first of all, to all these listeners that are boo-hoo crying, this guy didn't die. He killed himself. There's a difference. This guy decided to terminate his own life. When you die, you die of natural causes, accidents, what have you. Somebody kills you. This guy took a boatload of pills and decided to terminate a great life where everybody else could have been. Uh, he was on top of the world. He was a movie star. He had everything, and... He just couldn't take it. So all these people that call and talk about these movie stars, they could care less about all the other people in the world. If they did care about all the other people in the world, they wouldn't kill them, kill themselves. So I think they're just wasting their time crying over these idiots that decide to terminate their own life when they have everything. That's all I have to say about that, Tom. I I just love these dim-witted broads who call in, you should have seen him in Batman. Then then she admits, I mean, Batman hasn't even been released yet. I know. Well, they, they, she, well, I, she's acting like she worked on the film or something. Then we I, find out, oh, well, I, I know people who've seen clips on YouTube. Oh, stop it. I know, and that's why they, in this country they sell millions of Us Weekly magazines and all these TV shows on TV talking about what Star Wars what and what they didn't wear and what didn't look good. Get a freaking life, man. There's a lot more going on in the world than... Yeah, you know, following up what Star did what and what they said. That is you know, right. They, they could care less of what we think of them. Trust me. They, all they care about is making movies and making money. That's right. They're living their life. That's all they care about. And that's why they, they act as though they're actors. They act as though they care. They come on TV and they say all these nice things. It was so great working. Send your 950 and see their damn movie, whether it's good or bad. Oh, I love working with this director. He was so wonderful. He was so giving. He gave me an opportunity to express my the, the, the inner Joker, the, the, the Joker that I know lives within all of us. Oh, you know, when I see these interviews, it just makes me want to barf. I know, Tom. You're 100% right. Dom, take me out with, a, uh, with Kobe style. Here you go, Mark. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. 
800 tom That's our telephone number. Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Doing okay, Sean. Um, all right. So regarding this uh, whole Heath Ledger deal, uh, I understand what you're saying. You know, like it is, it might be like a selfish move to, you know, take your life because you have other people who like wives and children who like depend on you and, you know, like they just want you to be there. But you have to consider like these people sometimes are not ne- necessarily mentally stable. Like if you just look in the media, you look at people like Britney Spears, you know, she's kind of crazy. And then you know, like, you just never know. These people are just mentally unstable. It's not like they necessarily want to do it, but it's just the way that they think makes them feel like it's unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? It makes you wonder why people are fans of theirs. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interesting, you know? Like, maybe they just, like, they're fans of their work, but of the real character that they are, like, sometimes you just have to imagine, like, they just might not be thinking straight. Like, not everybody thinks straight. They might put on a face whenever they go out in the public, but deep down inside, they might be, like, severely depressed, have, like, crazy psychological issues that they haven't dealt with properly, which might lead them to take such uh, crazy actions as to, like, take their own lives, you know what I'm saying? Like, it might not necessarily be that they want to and that they want to be selfish and ruin their family members' lives, their loved ones' lives, just that they don't know right from wrong. Yeah, I I think you make some good points, Sean. I thank you. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Michael. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm okay. Hey, man, I just got a comment about the heat thing. Uh, I personally have had uh, three people that have been close to me um, in my life uh, kill themselves um, for, you know, assorted reasons. Um, before that happened, you know, I respect the, the hell out of them. You know, I know some, they've been some great people. Uh, one of them dated my sister for a long time and blah, blah, blah. But the minute you take your own life, it's like, like you're saying, it's the most selfish um, thing that a person can do because especially if you're leaving people behind, and, like, uh, how it affects your family and uh, stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe he played a good role in the Joker, but, I mean, that's a pretty crappy thing to do. I'll tell you what, if anybody I know ever committed suicide, they're dead to me. Well, Wait a minute, they're already yeah. dead. No, I mean, it's, I mean, and, I, mean I, I can agree to that, but it's like I respect them in their life, but once they do something like that, it's like, man, come on, dude. Like, who are you to, you know, ruin all these people's lives around right. you just because of whatever selfish reason you have. Now, if you're, like, legitimately insane or something, that's one thing. But if it's just because you're screwed up on some drugs or, you know, tired of having a billions of dollars and, you know, hook up with whatever girl you want, I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of life is that to leave, you know? I agree with you. But anyways, I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Thank you, Michael. Sean on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Hey, uh, yeah. Um... Uh, I was just talking to my wife a short time ago about that. She's all all down and sad about it. And I said, you know what I said? Anyone who uh, anyone who takes their own life, no, I don't have any sympathy for them because, you know, I uh, I was held up a long time ago back in 87, and I developed PTSD, and I have an anxiety problem myself. But I have Boom. too many friends and family and, and, and daughter and everyone that uh, I would not want to leave behind. I mean, this, this, this guy, he had a... A two-year-old daughter, and obviously, if he uh, if he was having like the last caller, if he was saying if he had too many uh, mental problems going on, now he 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 could get help, and either that or uh, maybe he didn't realize it. But if he had that many problems, there is help out there for him. And I just I don't feel sorry because it, you're just you're just throwing your life away and and, and leaving behind everyone who uh, who loves you. And I just uh, I I don't feel sorry for anyone who takes their own life. That's just uh, that's. That's how I feel. I mean, I'm still here. I've had uh, those feelings myself, but no, I've, I've you know I've had a battle through it, and you know I have many family and friends who love me, and I just it's just too selfish and a very successful guy, but I don't I don't feel I don't feel sorry for him. I agree with you, Shaw. So uh, that's all I wanted to say, and uh, big fan of your show. And thank you. Uh, uh, Got to start paying attention to those trailblazers. Yes. We are uh, surprising everybody this year. Actually, they're surprising all of his fans, and uh, we're uh, seeing where they're going to go this year. So could you take me out Kobe style, please? Yes, Sean, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. PTSD, oh. post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh.
I'm the I'm the lay person who's more about PTSD than anybody. Seriously. I spent weeks in an Alaska courtroom studying all the ins and outs of PTSD. I should have said that in the courtroom that time. Boo. 1-800-5800. Ooh, you having a flashback? Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Asif? Is that Asif? Hey, Tom, how you doing? All right, Asif. All right, so first I want to say regarding that one chick who was saying you have to uh, show uh, respect to celebrities. You don't show respect to any celebrity who hasn't earned it. Right. It's simple. The only two that I so far respect is one, Gene Simmons. And two is Wayne Newton, because they go and entertain our troops w without the press around. Oh, I thought that was kind of a facelift reference. Well, whatever. And okay. also, I'm more curious as to what was so uh, depressing in his life that he felt the only way out was to just take his life. Right. You know? The only celebrities I respect for are the ones who've appeared on the Tom Likas show. So my my word to celebrities is this. If you don't want to be treated this way when you go, I recommend you book an appearance on the Tom Likas show immediately. Oh, I would love to hear that. <laughs> Bet you would. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Marlene on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to comment about what the lady was saying when you talked about. The, she made it sound like, you know, a, Keith dying is worse than a garbage man dying. Yeah. And I was like, i got to tell you, I was really seriously insulted because I work in education, so you're going to tell me because Heath Ledger is an actor, his death should be like, you know, people should mourn it more because, you know, he touched so much more life. Give me a darn break, you know? I need that garbage man to come every week and, and throw out my trash, and his life is just as important as Heath Ledger. You know, it's like you said, it's a job is a job. They're actors, they make a gazillion dollars doing what they like to do, you know? And to put him on a pedestal because he was an actor as opposed to the rest of us peons, like, I'm just upset about that. It really upset me. I it's crazy. I, I, I was sitting there going, I can't believe this woman. Like, she's making him sound like a martyr. I'm like, give me a break. He's an actor. It's a job. And it's a job that gets paid really darn well. You know, how I wish, you know, but having to work with 700 kids every freaking day, I wish I was making a million dollars, you know. I mean, give me a darn break. He doesn't deserve to be put on a pedestal because he's an actor or to be treated special because they're actors. They're just people who work in a different line of work than other people, and that's it. You are right about that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. We are listening to you last night. We are on our way to go get a bite to eat. And, uh, you know, I kind of said a remark of, like, why do all women want to have control? And she smacked the crap out of my head. She's like, why do you listen to that Tom Likas? He's turning you into a jerk. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. All right, here we are at 1 800 800 Tom. It's 1 800 800 866. Walter on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm glad to hear it. Hey, I was calling in on your uh, subject with uh, the Heath character here. Uh, I'm probably echoing some of your other callers as far as uh, suicide. It's always a terrible thing, tragic, uh, sad for when it happens close to you. And I had a friend recently that uh, had taken that route. And you're left with a little bit of anger and uh, a deep sense that it was an incredibly selfish thing for that individual to carry out. Uh, but at the same time, when I was listening to your first listener, uh, they're talking about this individual as an artist. Number one, I didn't realize that we've lowered the bar that low uh, so that we can call someone that is, is playing the role of, of the Joker in a Batman movie in a second role uh, qualification to become an artist. Uh, in addition to that, I also was curious as to why you didn't uh, potentially suggest that maybe this is just one large publicity stunt and that uh, there is, hasn't actually been a suicide. Yeah, well, but there's a death here. There's no doubt there's a death here. 
Well, it wouldn't it be just the same sort of thing that the Riddler or uh, Joker would be able to pull off? But we're not talking about a movie here. We're talking about real life. CNN has covered it. I know it. I know it. I'm just joking. Okay, just checking. <laughs> yes, Batman is owned by Warner Brothers, and CNN is owned by Time Warner, which owns Warner Brothers, and you could come up with some kind of conspiracy theory. I tend to doubt it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ian on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Long-time listener. Um, I just wanted to say I think it's hilarious how these people, you know, call up and they assign all these, you know, qualities to these people. They think they know them. I mean, why? actors for the most part are very annoying people in my experience. And, you know, I, I just feel like anybody who... ODs on drugs, I mean, you know, they got no self-respect. I mean, you know, you got to push it pretty far to OD, so why should we have any respect? Yeah, they don't respect themselves. Yeah, exactly. Why should the rest of us respect them? No, I, I have no respect for anyone who does that. I mean, you know, really, you got to do a lot, man. I've done my share, and you got to push it way far to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. So, I don't know. Anyway, anybody who calls up and thinks he's a martyr, man, think again. He's not thinking about you or anything other than his millions of dollars, and now his family's going to get it all, so it's all good, man. <laughs> Thank you for that, Ian. All right. Uh, Appreciate the call. It's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. That's right. Hello. Hi, hey, Tommy. Hey, Tony. It's, how you doing, big guy? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Sorry to talk like that. I get like that as a New Yorker when I get annoyed. Not 15 seconds. It took 15 seconds for him to get it in. I'll do it fast. My point no, is no, no, that's not what I meant. It took you 15 seconds to get the fact that you were from New York in on the air uh, under the delusion that New Yorkers have that the rest of the world could give a crap. And the, the, real, the real truth, much to the chagrin of most New Yorkers, is that outside of New Jersey and Connecticut, the rest of us don't care. Yeah. Listen, Tommy, the point I have to make to you is this. This guy... No offense to you, but please don't take any offense. I like you. I respect you. I like what you've been telling a lot of people all these years. And I can't believe how many morons are out there, but we'll let that go. This guy went out his way. So I'm even surprised you're even putting him down. He made it. He did it. And he's gone. He did it. Shut your mouth We're on the air, Tony. This is not uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard here, okay? I apologize. I didn't know I couldn't say the S word. I apologize. But my point is quite clear. The way I look at it. That means it, you're going to repeat it again, right? Well, I'll let it go, then I won't, I won't repeat it. Uh, that's that's my, the plain and simple truth with this guy. And you know what? As far as everybody's concerned, yeah. They feel sorry for him, but why? He had full control of what he did. I don't feel sorry for him. He's gone. Right. He did it his way. So why are they talking about it? He did it his way. No one killed him. I'd have sympathy at that point. He partied. He went out with a bang. I, I, he, he did it his way. I think that's fantastic. I think Paul Anka would be proud. <laughs> well, Tom, that's all I had to say. And uh, love your show. You're the best, Tom. Thank that's you. My, that's my nephew. Okay, Turn very good. You. you take care now, Tom. Can you take me out? Yep, I just did. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> good work there, Tony. Unbelievable. Tony, of course, is from New York, and he wants you to know that. <laughs> Fifteen seconds. That's about what it takes. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, hmm, Carly on the Tom Likas show. Hi Tom, how are you? I'm good. That's it. I just barely started listening to you because a bunch of guys at work all talk about you and listen to you, so I kind of wanted to get an insight. <laughs> And this is one topic, I only listen for a little bit because normally I have my kids with me after, but this is one topic I completely agree with you 110%. There is no reason to pay this man any sort of respect. The person who I feel sorry for is his wife and his kid. Because I'm recently, well, not recently, it's been four years now, I'm a widow, I have two children, and it's hard. And I can only imagine this poor woman, why, 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 and as his daughter gets older, why, why, why? And I, 
disagree with you. I think it's ridiculous. The first caller that was in talking about his Batman movie and everything else, who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry. He, he had no respect for his daughter or his wife or any other family members that loved or cared about him. So no. I just kind of wanted to call in and say that. And it's a different type of show, but <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of getting some insight onto what everybody's thinking. So I appreciate it. What, what have you learned from this program? Oh, <laughs> how men are, are kind of thinking <laughs> about yeah. certain issues with women. And how, how are we thinking? <laughs> Some think a little bit different, I guess. I, I I take I work with primarily men, so I'm kind of getting insight onto a bunch of it. I'm I'm kind of starting to date and and see what I can do. And you know what? It, it kind of sucks because a lot of men don't view it how I view it. I guess I just wanted you know, unfortunately, to have my family. And a lot of men are just out there to get theirs, and I've just kind of been hearing that and learning it. So I see. <laughs> You know, but I mean, more power to you. You're doing your thing, and you know, I I appreciate it. Thank you, but I just, you know, I kind of wanted to say this is one topic I agree with you on 110. percent Well, it had to happen eventually, darling. Dan is in Port Parkland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Hello. How are you, Tom? Great show. Thank you. Uh, long time, first time. Can I first of all make a recommendation? I guess you should start screening calls for our linguistically challenged brethren on the East Coast who don't know that you can't actually say the S word on the radio. Well, uh, uh, that and uh, nobody cares that you're from New York. Let me just say this to the people from New York. Uh, there is no need within the first 15 seconds of every call to say, I'm a New Yorker. I'm from New York. I just got out of here from New York. You don't have to do it. We don't care. Nobody cares. Nobody's impressed. Nobody cares. Too true. Hey, I don't really even have an opinion on Heath Ledger's death. I, I don't really want to go there for fear that I won't be able to tie Ledger's death back to global culture vis-a-vis -vis the new Batman movie. But uh, I kind of wanted to make get your take on something that drives me nuts about the tabloid journalism you were talking about at the beginning of the hour, the, the, the extra and all the celebrity shows, the E! channel and the live anchors and whatever. I kind of want to get your take on it, if this bugs you or irritates you as much as it does me. The only specific I can, example I can think of is, remember Michael Jackson got busted for the whole pedophile thing, and he's a freak, and it's terrible, and he yes. goes to jail. Or, um, I turn on the TV, I'm channel surfing, and I bump into E or CNN or something, and there's this chick with a little camera crew, and she's reporting live. She's like, we're live. She's sitting on Michael Jackson's couch in Michael Jackson's house he, while he's in jail. And she's talking all about it. I'm like, wait, 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 back up. How how did you get into his house? What gives you the right? Heaven forbid, if I ever become famous and get busted for racketeering or something dumb, I don't ever want some reporter in my house, on my furniture, doing it. How long is it going to be before we're going to, I guarantee you, actually, won't be surprised to turn on the radio or turn on the TV and see a reporter sitting on the bed that Heath Ledger off himself. I'm actually lying <laughs> on the bed. Larry. The guy is standing right outside the building right now. Oh, he's only a few dozen feet away. It won't be long before he's actually lying and adopting the pose that Ledger had as he uh, as he took the pills. Man, it's <laughs> it's an invasion and it's just the worst kind of tabloid nonsense. That's all I got, Tom. Take me out old school if you would, please. All right, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Lori on the Tom Likas show. Uh, Dean says you're lying about your age. Hello. Anyways, it's not about my age. What I was. Oh yeah, you are that. lying about your age. Okay. When you say you're not, it, when you when, when you say it's not about your age, believe me, the fact that you feel the need to lie about your age means it's all about your age. No, I don't have to. I don't feel like I have to validate my age. Hello, I, I love your it's, show. I wanted to talk about this subject, this Heath Ledger topic. You know, I all these people calling in, and uh, yeah, I'm 29 years old, and I want to say that I didn't say 21, anyways. What I was you pretended to be 29, dear. That's what you did. You even, called in. You not, pretended to be 29 years bad, old, and you think. You think your voice is not a dead giveaway, but everybody can tell that you're an old lady. Why do you pretend to be something you're not? You know, I was calling to say you're talking about... Well, I really don't care what you were calling to say. You had to lie about your age to get on the air, dear. The Tom Likas Show.